Hello and welcome to the Rahul's podcast, a series of video lectures where Rahul sir forces me to take his interview on important matters related to current affairs. Rahul sir, welcome. <laughs> okay then, well, this is my last podcast with you. So from sir, next time, okay sir, you uh, should I was record just... postcard uh, podcast with those whom you will invite. Okay, sir, uh, let me uh, restart the int- uh, intro. I, I was just kidding around. Hello and welcome to the Rouse IS podcast, a series of video lectures where we take up important articles and important news terms which the students themselves could find uh, very confusing, complicated and that's why we want to break it down and uh, as always we have Rahul Puri sir with us, the faculty of political science and international relation Uh, and sir, today I have identified a topic which has bothered me a lot which is uh, the liberal world order and so in last two to three months we have been hearing a lot about uh, collapse of liberal world order, decline of liberal world order but before jumping right into the reasons as to why it is declining I would like to first ask uh, what is liberal world order? I am still thinking whether to answer this or not Uh, so next time when you will invite, we will record then Okay. Okay. So, but because as we have started, so Mm -hmm. as you have asked that what exactly the liberal world order is. So, liberal world order is the order which has been created on the, on the ideas given by the liberal scholars. Mm -hmm. And it is the liberal scholars, liberal scholars, when we say liberal scholars, meaning means those who have emphasized on the value of liberty, Mm -hmm. liberty or freedom. For the time being, we can use these two words as synonyms, liberty and freedom. Mm-hmm. So world order where the liberties of the people will be protected mm-hmm. will be seen as a world order based on liberal ideas. Mm-hmm. And uh, liberal ideas gained prominence after the end of Second World War mm-hmm. because the world saw devastation. Mm-hmm. And uh, this threatened the world when world has seen the devastation caused by nuclear weapons. Mm-hmm. So the world order which was prevailing earlier was war prone and uh, conflict prone. So liberals came up with the idea that if humanity wants to live in peace, the only way forward is the liberal world order Mm -hmm. and US became the most vocal supporter of this order. Mm -hmm. And that's why you can see the Statue of Liberty is also in US. Uh Okay, so US became the flag bearer of the liberal world order and uh, on, so US became the flag bearer and the supporter also. Mm -hmm. And in the present times, why this is in the news and as you are reading so many articles uh, and so many queries as you said that you are getting queries from the student that uh, they want to know about this. That's why as you said sir, we should record a podcast on this. So why, why, why uh, this is in the news because this world order has become fragile. So I'm not saying it is crumbling as such, but it has become fragile. Yeah. But sir, while answering my mm-hmm. query, uh, you mentioned that the order which existed before, yeah. uh, but you did not actually specify. So, so what is there any name yes. or so term? that? Why is... I didn't say this because I wanted to know that how seriously you are listening. Okay. So good that you are listening it this carefully. As I said, there was an order which was prevailing earlier. And the name of that order was Westphalian World Order, WWO. Okay. And the endeavor was to turn this world order into a new kind of world order or a terminology we use is global world order or liberal world order. Mm-hmm. The belief is the Westphalian world order was created with the signing of the Treaty of Westphalia, which was signed way back in the history around 1648. The Treaty of Westphalia was signed mm-hmm. and uh, this Westphalia Treaty made sovereignty as the most important element of state. Mm. So from now onwards, state sovereignty became sacrosanct. Mm. That no one should uh, no one should hurt, hinder or hurt the sovereignty of the other. Mm. But this sovereignty based world order became war prone and mm. conflict prone. So we saw that Westphalian world order is conflict prone and that is why liberal world orders, the idea of, given by liberals that we need a new kind of world order based on liberal ideas which led to the emergence of liberal world order. Mm. Now, liberal world order has two dimensions. Okay. Okay. So, as I was saying that, uh, so Westphalian world order became war prone, conflict prone. So, liberal scholars basically emerged in US and they came up with the idea to have a world order based on the protection of liberties and freedom, which led to the emergence of liberal world order. Yes, sir. Uh, so, although, so although it has been in existence for the last 75 uh, or so years after World War II as you said, uh, why are we uh, hearing so much about its collapse, imminent collapse? Um, uh, it will be too early to sound the death bell of this kind of world order that it will collapse but uh, for sure that uh, it has become fragile. Mm. 
Hmm. Now to understand its fragility, you need to understand the dimensions first. Okay. And liberal world order has two dimensions. One mm -hmm. is liberal political order and mm -hmm. liberal economic order. Mm -hmm. So when we are saying a world order based on the protection of liberties, now it can be political and economic liberties, mm -hmm. where people have economic freedom, people have political freedom. Mm -hmm. So two dimensions of a liberal world order are liberal political and liberal economic order. Yes, sir. So liberal scholars, they came up with the idea, their belief is that if world over will be able to protect and restore and strengthen democracy, this will strengthen liberal political order where mm -hmm. people should have the right to elect their representatives. Mm -hmm. And uh, a economically interdependent world through the forces of globalization will strengthen liberal economic order. Mm -hmm. And that is why in the Britain Wood institution, in the Britain Wood conference, institutions like IMF and World Bank was created. So IMF and World Bank are basically, if you see from the, if you see the broader picture, these organizations were created to strengthen liberal economic order. Mm. And UN as an institution was created to strengthen liberal political order. So these are the two dimensions of the liberal order. Now you can clearly see UN is in deadlock. Mm. UN is not able to settle the disputes. Mm. UN has failed to deter Russia from invading Ukraine. UN is not able to stop Israel from its military action in Gaza. Correct. So one side UN is not holding the kind of power which UN was earlier the way UN was doing earlier, we are seeing, and in fact, the statement given by the Indian Prime Minister, this is high time for UN to reform, otherwise UN will be irrelevant. Irrelevant. And parallelly, we are seeing rising protectionism mm. and trade wars going on between the states. And US itself is drifting away from uh, the free trade and, want, and going for protectionism against China. So one side, you can see suppression of liberties with the rise of authoritarian regimes in the world, mm. with the rise of violent fundamentalism in the world, okay, which in the form of Islamic fundamentalism, with the rise of protectionism, mm. with the uh, with the international with the deadlock in international institutions and organization, deadlock in WTO. Okay, so one side rising fundamentalism, rising ultra nationalism, okay, and other side rising protectionism is making the whole world order fragile. All right. So, sir, as and when this order becomes more fragile and maybe at some point of time we don't know whether it becomes irrelevant, mm -hmm. what is uh, the vision that India harbors with respect to uh, the future of world order? Now, this is a very interesting question. So, you know, our vision, our vision has always in sync with the world order which was created by US after the end of Second World War mm -hmm. as India became a democratic state. And India is known as the island of democracy outside the Western world. Mm -hmm. So our vision and our value system is in sync with the liberal world order. Mm -hmm. So it is not in the interest of India if this world order becomes fragile. So India is one of the most vocal supporter of this world order which prevails at present. Mm -hmm. That is why you can see the uh, India, is, India wants reforms in UN. Mm -hmm. India stand is high time to reform and India is looking forward for the permanent membership. Mm -hmm. Okay, India is able to bring AU in uh, during G20. Mm -hmm. So India is not only pushing for multilateralism, India wants to protect this world order as this world order is also coming from coming under threat from China. Mm -hmm. As China is trying to impose a Sinocentric world order mm -hmm. and India is not at all comfortable with the Sinocentricism approach of China and this is the reason why India is clearly aligning with US for the protection of this world order. Mm -hmm. Thank you sir. That's why we will always need you. I'll remember this. Uh, for uh, simplifying uh, the co as complicated topics as liberal world order and its uh, downfall. Uh, so that is it for today. We will keep on coming with more podcasts on our channel. So stay tuned, do subscribe and uh, be updated. I hope this discussion will help students and if they have any queries, they can uh, ask you and I will see whether I will either I will answer or not. Uh, sir, students can ask me and I will become the messenger. I will communicate the doubts to you and then it's your responsibility to answer them in the comment section for sure i will all right sir